Do you think when you go, when you dig to the core, there is a big, there's a big gap between left and right? Is there, is that division that that's perceived currently real? Or are most people like center left and center right? It's so interesting because that's such a loaded term, center left. What does that mean? Like to you, I think the way you're thinking of it is I'm not like a, well, even this, like I'm not a radical socialist, but I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm marginally left on cultural issues and economic issues. This is how we've traditionally understood things. Yeah. Um, and then when, when in popular discourse, like center, right, like, what does it mean to be center, right? Like I am marginally right on social, on conserve, on social issues and marginally right on economic issues. Yeah. But that's just not politics. Like if you look at survey data, for example, like, uh, stimulus checks, people who are against stimulus checks are conservative, right? Well, 80% of the population is for a stimulus check. So that means a sizable number of Republicans are for stimulus checks. Same thing happens on like a wealth tax. Um, the same thing happens on, okay, Florida voted for Trump 3.1%, more than Barack Obama 2008. On the same day, passes a $15 minimum wage at 67%. Yeah. So what's going on? So that's why- What I, is going on? <laughs> Well, that's what my so, entire career. So, <laughs> like, no, but but it seems yeah. like uh, so th that's yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah. The conversation is different than the policies. Well, it's different than reality. That's what right. I would say. Which is that the way we have to understand American politics today. It didn't always used to be this way. Is it's almost entirely along basic. I, I would say the main divider is because even when you talk about class, this misses it in terms of socioeconomics. It's around culture, which is that it's basically, if you went to a four-year degree granting institution, you are part of one culture. If you didn't, you're part of another. I don't want to erase the 20% or whatever of people who did go to a college degree who are Republicans or vice versa, et cetera. But I'm saying on average, in terms of the median way that you feel, we're basically bifurcating along those lines. And because people get upset, be like, oh, well, you know, there are rich people who vote for Trump. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you know who they are? They're like plumbers or something like they're, they're people who make one hundred thousand dollars a year, but they didn't go to a four year college degree and they might live who are in a place which is not an urban metro area. And then at the same time, you have like a Vox writer who makes like 30 grand, but they have a lot more cultural power than like the plumber. So you have to think about where exactly that line is. And I think in general, that's the way that we're trending. So that's why when I say like, what's going on? Are we divided? Yeah. Like, but it's not left and right. I mean, like, and that's why I hate these labels. So it's more, it's, like, it's more just red and blue, like teams. They're arbitrary teams. Yeah. Are they, so how arbitrary are these teams? I guess is another. Completely th arbitrary. Right? So yeah. well, you kind of imply yeah. that there's, I don't know if yeah. you're sort of in post analyzing yeah. the patterns because it seems like there's a network effects of like you just pick the team red or blue mm -hmm. and it might have to do with college. It might have to do all those things, but like it, it seems like it's more about uh, just the people around you. Correct. So less than whether you went to college or not. I mean, it's almost like seems like it's it's almost like uh, weird, yeah, yeah, right. like uh, network effects that are hard. There's certain strong patterns that you're identifying, but I don't know. It's sad to think that it might be just teams that have nothing to do with what you actually believe. <laughs> well, it <laughs> is, Lex. I look. I mean, I don't want to believe that, but the data points me to this. Which, especially 2020, I'm one of the people, chief among them. I will own up to it here. I was totally wrong about why Trump was elected in 2016. I believed. And I based a lot of my public commentary belief on this. Trump was elected because of a rejection of Hillary Clinton neoliberalism on the back of a pro worker message, which was anti immigration. It was its pillar, but alongside of it was a rejection of free trade with China and <laughs> generally of the political correctness and globalism which has been come in through the uniparty and same thing here with the military industrial complex and endless war. He rejected all of that. What's, wait, what's wrong with that prediction? It's wrong, man. And the reason I know this sounds is right. that <laughs> it sounds right. I wish it, I honestly wish it was true, but here's the truth. 
Trump actually governed largely as a neoliberal Republican who was meaner online and who departed from orthodoxy in some very important ways. Don't get me wrong. I will always support the trade war with China. I will always support not expanding the wars in Afghanistan and in Iraq. I will support him moving the Overton window on a million different things and revealing once and for all that GOP voters don't care about economic orthodoxy necessarily. But here's what they do care about. Trump got more votes in 2020 than he did in 2016, despite not delivering largely, largely for all the Trump people out there on that agenda. He wasn't more pro-union, but he won more union votes. He wasn't necessarily more pro-worker, but he actually won more votes in Ohio than he did in in 2016. And he won more Hispanic votes than despite being, you know, all the immigration agenda, uh, rhetoric, et cetera. Here's why. It's about the culture which is that the culture war is so hot that negative partisanship is at such high levels, all of the vote is geared upon what the other guy might do in office. And there's a poll actually just came out by Echelon Insights. Crystal and I were talking about it on Rising. The number one concern amongst Democratic voters is Trump voters. Number one concern. Mm. Not issues like Trump voters. And number two is white supremacy. (laughs) And so like, which is basically code for Trump voters. And is the same then, true for the other side? Well, so on the right, number one concern is illegal immigration. Um, oh. And number, I think, three or four or whatever is Antifa, which is code for well, it's nice. At least on the right, it's a policy kind well, of thing. Well, yeah, it's funny. Ben, <laughs> I saw Ben Shapiro was talking about this. But the reason why I would functionally say it's the same is because, the I mean, you can believe whether it's true or not. I think it actually largely is true. But like, the, a lot of GOP vo- voters feel like a lot of illegal immigration is code for like people who are coming in who are going to be legalized and are going to go vote Democrat. Like I can I can just explain it from their point of view. So like, what does that actually mean? Each other, like yeah. and each other, which is that the number one concern is the other person. So negative partisanship has never been higher. And I think people who had my thesis in terms of why Trump was elected in 2016, you have to grapple with this. Like, how did he win? 10 million more votes. He came 44,000 votes away from winning the presidency across three states. Like, I don't, none of our popular discourse reflects that very stark reality. And I think so much of it is people really hate liberals. Like, they just really hate them. And I was driving through rural Nevada before the election, and I was like literally in the middle of nowhere. And there was this massive sign this guy had out in front of his house, and it just said, Trump colon, fuck your feelings. And I was like, that's it. That is why people voted for Trump. And I don't want to denigrate it because they truly feel they have no cultural power in America except to raise the middle finger to the elite class by pressing the button for Trump. I get that. That's actually a totally rational way to vote. It's not the way I wish wish we did vote, but like, you know, that's not my place to say. So yeah. this is interesting. If yeah. you could just psychoanalyze, I'm again I'm probably naive about this, but I'm really bothered by the hatred of liberals. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's a, this amorphous monster that's mocked. It's like the Shapiro uh liberal tears. And I'm also really bothered by uh probably more of my colleagues and friends, the hatred of Trump. Yeah. Uh, the 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 Trump and and white supremacist. So apparently seventy there's seventy million white supremacists. Seventy five million. Sorry, there's millions yeah. <laughs> of white supremacists. <laughs> and uh, apparently whatever liberal is, I mean, liber, you know, you literally liberal has become equivalent to white supremacist in the power of negativity it arouses. I don't even know what those. I mean, honestly, I just don't, they've become swears, essentially. Uh, Is that, I mean, how do we get uh, out of this? Because that, uh, that's why I just don't even say anything about politics online, because it's like, really? Like, you you can't, you, you, here's what happens. Anything you say that's like thoughtful, like, hmm, I wonder the, like, uh, immigration, something. Like, I wonder, like why you know uh we have 
these many, we allow these many immigrants in, or the, some version of the, like thinking through these difficult policies and so on. The, they'll immediately try to find like a single word in something you say that can put you in a bin of liberal or white supremacist and then hammer you to death <laughs> by saying you're one of the two. And then everybody just piles on happily that we finally nailed this white supremacist or liberal. And that is this some kind of weird like feature of online communication that we've just stumbled upon? Is there a way, or is it possible to argue that this is like a feature, not a bug? Like this is a, a good thing? <laughs> yeah, well, look, I just think it's a reflection of who we are. People like to blame social media. I think we're just incredibly divided right now. I think we've been divided like this for the last 20 years. And I think that econ 